That's so dumb. A movie that set the bar for pretty much all CG in today's modern era. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta re-render this. We have People two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's the genius. There's a bunch of other React videos online with various professionals in their field talking about cool works of whatever it is that they do. And we wanted to try doing that ourselves here. So this is the second video we've made. We had an amazing response to the first video. Thank you to all of you who subscribed to the channel. If you think of a video you want us to react to, visual effects you want us to break down, please leave a comment. All right, what's the first video? Harry is still alive. Case closed. <laughs> I do really like that fur. They made that fur look really I good. Oh, dude. It yeah. looks warm and soft. Yeah. It's like a little cat. It's like a little cat. When we were analyzing Sonic, I mentioned how the green of his eyes was more saturated than the green in the background. Sure. Like if Sonic was actually there and you actually filmed him with a camera, your camera wouldn't suddenly be able to arbitrarily capture more saturation on him than the other stuff that's green in the scene. Oh. It needs to obey the rules of your camera. In this scene, no colors are more saturated than the other. Like the green on the bubble source back is the exact same green saturation as the background. The eyes are pushing it a little bit, but even then not that much. My first reaction to seeing oh. a lot of these shots is that they, awesome. they added fur to a lot of Pokemon that in through the cartoons you can't really do fur I never really considered a lot of these Pokemon to even have fur Think of like the artist who had to sit there and think like okay, which direction do the hairs go? <laughs> like your hairs go a direction. There's like an there's an evolutional direction there's, to our there's, hair. there's hair brushes like digital CG hair brushes that you can actually shape the hair with and then it kind of stays there And then it kind of reacts to the motion. Well it clumps up. It's like in tufts. Yeah, you know yeah. It's not just like all hairs individually spaced apart from each other like your hairs kind of clump up and Where and do you see that? Uh, armpits. Yeah. Like armpits right in there, are, yeah. There's slight tonality differences to the hair. But really to be nice. fair, hair is something that we've been able to do for over 15 years pretty well. Monsters Inc. was like the first time I remember seeing Monsters hair. Monsters Inc. was the first having, time like, hair was actually a thing. Like, but you can see how how, how much the fewer horns. hairs there are here. Yeah. Well, like I'm specifically look at his left shoulder there. You can see individual hairs. Yeah. yeah. And if you were to do that today, there'd be probably. 10 to 100 times more hairs per square inch. You might remember in the last video, we talked about ambient occlusion. Hair has a lot of ambient occlusion. Underneath your hair, near the roots, most of the hair above is blocking a lot of the light, and that's how you get kind of, you can kind of see the layers of hair on top of themselves. Oh, yeah. Subsurface, Subsurface scattering, scattering on, on his dude, face there. Look at the dodgeball shoulders, dude. <laughs> it is a dodgeball. Oh my God. <laughs> he straight up has dodgeball shoulders. <laughs> hair is not 100% opaque. It's actually slightly translucent. Mm. And so the fringes of the hair on Pikachu's mm. tail, yep. they're catching the light in front of Pikachu. You're and that's right. getting a, a little edge Kind of looks like a stroke yeah. around the... So those are the little tips of the hair catching the light, but then the light actually enters the hair and then passes through it after being diffused a little bit. Now that's something that Monsters Inc. was missing, and that's what makes fur look very realistic in these scenes. They did a really good job of setting up the lighting to work really well with these CG yes. characters. It looks like a one or two point kind of light setup. You have the light in the far back blasting it, right? And that's causing the shadow down here in the foreground. And then you have like an overhead kind of fill. For me, some scenes are easier to light in CG if it's like a one point light. Yeah. It just looks better. Very specific directional lighting helps a lot for creating CG scenes. So here, here's the genius of this scene. One of the things that makes stuff look real is something called radiosity or global illumination. It goes by a lot of different names, but basically it's the way light bounces. I'm shining the flashlight on my hand and it's lighting up the side of his face. In CG, to get that, you have to simulate a ray coming out of the light, hitting a surface, and scattering and bouncing off. But you have to do it many, 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 many times to get all the scatters and get your sampling of the environment. And that's a lot of math. They can't do bounce lighting back then. There's no option to do bounce lighting. So what do they do? They set their scene at night with a single source of light, and that's it. Notice how the dark parts in the scene, where the headlights aren't hitting the T-Rex, it's just pitch black. So you don't have to worry about bounce light. Great, problem one solved. Good job everybody, you're geniuses. Number two, by making it rain, they can have specular lighting all over the T-Rex and make it feel like it's reflective, but all they have to reflect is a white spot. Notice you can see the specular on his legs, on his toes, on the side of his thigh. He's just, he's just shiny as a whole. <laughs> he's just shiny, but all you're, trying, all you're showing for reflection is basically a blob of white. Pretty much here onwards, all of this right here is a real T-Rex. They have the perfect reference. That's an animatronic T-Rex head. That, they have actual footage of that that they can match the CG one too. If they didn't have that, they'd be like, how dark do we make it? How reflective yeah. do we make it? Perfect. So perfect. good, so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Jeff Goldblum, you madman, you hero. Also, I think this is the first shot where the camera's actually oh moving through 3D space. Oh yeah, 3D Dude, tracking. That was a very challenging shot right there. This shot in particular, 
This was the hardest shot in the whole movie. I talked about this in my TED talk, but there's a single <laughs> frame. Mind. Oh, what are we gonna see? So the T-Rex the obviously grabs the, the Velociraptor, but for one single frame that is in the final movie. I'm waiting for this. I'm on the edge of my seat. Oh. <laughs> for one frame, the Velociraptor is completely missing. I think what happened is that the, the 3D models, the actual files they sent to the cache to oh. be rendered, for whatever reason, on that one frame, the Velociraptor model disappeared. They got so no. lucky it happened then. Yes. If it would have happened anywhere other, dude, it would have been so bad. Dude, they're so lucky it wasn't the T-Rex model that I'm missing. I know! <laughs> So we have People. two weeks and it takes two months to render. <laughs> I, I would love to find out more information about why that Velociraptor is missing. If you search this up in any YouTube clip, it's gonna be there. Unlike the Starbucks cup, which is going to be gone forever, forevermore from Game of Thrones. How did that get through? <laughs> Okay, so now we're talking about Modern. Jurassic World. The end of the first Jurassic World movie. HD. And at a technical level, the effects here are certainly better than they were in Jurassic Park. So why do people think that the effects are worse? In Jurassic Park, they these raptors were real. Mm -hmm. When you see them walking too, they were real. So that's what they're going up against. I think growing up, this was like the scariest moment of any movie I'd ever seen. So that's real? Yeah. Yes. Oh. There's, there's two things that you get with real. One is motion. So I think looks that's a lot more realistic. I can't tell. Which is, like, so when you're animating stuff by hand in CG, it can go anywhere. The second one is acting. Those kids are acting so much better with real pots and pans falling on them and real velociraptors sticking their heads out of things. Like, it's so much easier to like get into the space when you have an actual dinosaur on set versus like, all right, look at this man with the green ball. So you want to imagine it's where my fist is. Yeah. And you guys want to focus right here. And it's like, oh, it's a dinosaur. It's like, even if you're Chris Pratt, <laughs> it's still tough to do. If you actually like pause on any of these frames, they all look really good. What's he doing? Is he trying to be friends with the dinosaur? Yes. This is alien. Have, have you not seen it? No. Oh. For so much of this, you can just tell that it's computer generated, regardless of whether or not it's technically good. And because you can tell that it's fake, you can tell that the people that you're watching are not actually in any real danger, and your suspension of disbelief is a little shattered. Yep. It's very interesting. With a with a smaller budget, Jurassic Park was crunched into choosing their VFX shots very, very wisely. And they didn't hold shots for longer than they needed to. Mm -hmm. It was it was real. They treated it as if it was yeah. real. And it looks but, more real because of that. Exactly. Whereas this is, they can do whatever they want, so they're going artistic with it and creative. Yes. But as they go artistic and creative, it's becoming less real. Correct. Remember that, remember that moment from Jurassic Park 3 when the Velociraptor was sitting on the airplane and was like, Hey, Alan! Wait, this, I thought you guys were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is a real thing? I need to see this. This is good, just, just let this play. This is a reference to the Twilight Zone. I've had that dream before, no, I gotta wake up in a car and I was driving. Alan! Oh, Alan! <laughs> <laughs> Was Did he just whisper, hey, Alan? Yeah. yeah. That's so dumb. Well, it's because someone's trying to wake him up, and he's like, hey, Alan, wake up. <laughs> they didn't even, like, the mouth to, like, move from both syllables. Like, hey, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know who I am. Genie, wishes, lamp, none of that ringing a bell. That, Ooh, that's a little that weird. right there. <laughs> Everyone had a problem with that shot for I one very specific reason. Because it's obviously Will Smith, but everything about it looks wrong. Well, he looks like <laughs> and a no minotaur. one can exactly tell why. He looks like a minotaur. Like, look, why, he's walking, he's floating. Look at him. He looks like a minotaur. Why is he walking? Why is he taking steps? He's not walking, he's floating. But it looks like he's like, hey, it's me. He's just floating like, along. We just can't see the bottom half of him. That's because, because my brain puts him as a minotaur. Like, he's a minotaur right there. Can you figure out why it feels wrong, Ren? What it comes down to is that it looks unnatural and it's triggering a very specific part of our brain that identifies faces and humans. All, like, all the check marks are listed as like, that's obviously not just a person, but Will Smith. And it's not just the fact that he's blue. It's his kind of proportions. His face yeah. kind of looks a little too small for that size of a head. His neck looks a little too thick. And yeah. I think a lot of that is mostly driven by the actual <laughs> camera, focal length and placement and whatnot. Amazing CG body there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> hot, hot CG body for the next hot one. Hot CG body. The muscles on his back, like they flex and they move and they indent, they pull the skin with he's them. He's yoked, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, 
That's incredible artistry. It's great. It's amazing. And then for the front, his CG body still looks good. Yeah, but, but it's like what it's happened like the is I there's a the face shadows. from a man who does not have that body, <laughs> kind of like just pasted in the center. It almost feels like the blue doesn't match, and this might be a color grading thing where they just put a mask here and brighten his face. Oh, no, it's it's the CG face. 100% of that face is CG. Okay, but like his face is actually a little bright compared to the rest of him. It's like oh, we need to be able to see his face here, so I'll just draw a mask here and brighten it up. Oh, like a power window? Yeah, like color grading thing. A power window, it's like, but it's, it's actually like, throwing off the lighting now because it's his sh face should be in shadow, like his. Uh, uh, left peck is. His face should be about as bright as that peck in the shadows, but it's a little bit brighter. Everyone reacted super negatively to this specific shot, myself included, but then they released a follow-up trailer a few weeks later. See, this looks great. Because yeah. it's lit well, you're it's not showing well. too much. And I mean, also, it's, the proportions are specifically thrown off. He looks super huge, so it's triggering our brains a little bit less than if he was trying to fool us completely. Honestly, genie, genie can't trick me. The genie can't trick me. <laughs> a big thing is the lighting. Like, in that shot, there's a nice, like, edge light, and there's a clear, defined key light, and it's giving his face volume and, like, character versus... The other shot is, like, this just ambient wash, like, a little bit of a yeah. light on the side. This looks and So they had nothing this, to really show This goes you. back to what we were talking about earlier with the very specific uh, directional lighting. Yeah. Like this? this that, that looks, looks, that looks solid. That looks really good. <laughs> is this a lighting <laughs> issue? I think it's a lighting, lighting issue. issue. I mean, it's a little bit... Yeah, CG monkey, though. Looks pretty legit. He looks great. See, he looks fine right there. Something I noticed here, so his abs, right? There's actually a little bit of discoloration there, almost as if it was body paint. And this is actually a tricky thing in visual effects, is a lot of what we understand about reality in movies is not actual reality, but what we've seen in special effects. So like, for example, when people get shot in movies, we expect there to be a big pop and dust and blood, and that's not what happens when people actually get shot. When you're doing visual effects, you're not always going for reality. You're going for a simulated special effect. And therefore, you'd have slight discolorations and things like that. You end up making it look more real because it actually looks like real makeup as opposed to an actual blue person. Terminator 2, a classic. The movie that set the bar for Jurassic Park and pretty much all CG in today's modern era. Yeah, not a wasted minute. Literally not a wasted minute. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Sick. Dude, that's so sick. So this is actually mostly a compositing thing. Yeah. This isn't this isn't like a computer-generated 3D model or anything. This is straight up classic After Effects type <laughs> stuff. Dude, that one right there, like a couple yeah. frames back. It's pretty it. incredible, honestly. In fact, there's a little bit of a VFX history lesson to give you guys here. With this shot, ILM kind of pioneered morphing. And morphing is actually a pretty simple thing. Basically, you're just doing a distort, and as you're distorting, you're doing a crossfade. And after this, people went crazy for morphing. It was like, morphing was the hot new thing for a couple of years for visual effects shops. Now, the reason I bring this up is because there is a sequence of morphs in Michael Jackson's black and white music video that are the best morphs I have ever seen in my entire life. You're not and thanks for watching. If you want to see us review any other sort of movies or TV shows, leave a comment suggesting what we should see next. But in the meantime, try clicking that subscribe button. Just restocked our store with some of our most popular classic designs. So those of you who know what's up, you can look good while hitting that subscribe button. This free returns, so it doesn't fit you. Whatever, send it right back. We'll take it. <laughs>